Hello guys, this is Adip. Welcome to my channel Movement Science, where I simplify biomechanics and lot of ortho topics with Joe. So if you are new to this channel, consider subscribing. Also check me out on Instagram, where I post pictures of my notes and also put out daily MCQs with which you can brush up your biomechanics. The reference time for all the topics that I'm going to cover will be mentioned down in the description. So check that out and let's get started. So in this video, we are going to talk about the arthrosis at the hip joint. Now, what is arthrosis? articular deterioration okay so articular is the arthro over here and osis is basically degeneration it is the most common and painful hip condition that we see and 7 to 25 percent of the people get affected and over here females are more affected than males okay so what are we going to cover in this topic we will be talking about the risk factors and then we will see two ways in which this pathology can occur it may not be the only two ways but the most common ones okay so let's start with the risk factors these are very obvious ones so starting with the first one is history of previous injury to the hip so if there is any previous injury like labral tear or something this will co create instability at the hip joint which will predispose your hip joint to arthritis or degeneration at the articulation okay so next one is the extensive manual labor and also repetitive running so these are kind of they go together basically excessive load on your hip joint can cause arthrosis at the hip joint now over here repetitive running uh, don't get me wrong with running okay running for recreational activity is really good for your hip joint or any other joints in fact it actually reduces the chances of arthritis in your joints but excessive running or uh, excessive loading at the hip joint that can be one of the risk factors going ahead is the anatomical abnormality which we have seen in our previous videos also something like coxa vera and also retroverted acetabulum and also the femoroacetabular impingement like the cam and the pincer impingement these can be again risk factors for your degeneration at the hip joint apart from that chronic synovial irritation and fluid leakage can be also a factor for arthritis or arthrosis then going to the last ones there is the micro instability which can be caused due to many other reasons then there is abnormal loading at the hip joint and also increased bmi that is increased body weight so this weight can again translate over here that is basically excessive force on the hip joint so now going to the pathology we will divide it into two parts that is first the pathology can be created because of the forces and second one because of some previous damage which can interfere with the synovial fluid and then causing some other problems so first talking about the forces there is excessive forces on the joint or it can be an in inadequate force okay on the joint so excessive forces is pretty simple right there is excessive force which causes degeneration over time but inadequate force is something interesting now over here what we need to understand is your head of the femur and your acetabulum when there is compression over there the synovial fluid which is there present in the joint it diffuses into the cartilage and that's how your cartilage gets the nutrition now if there are inadequate forces basically what it means is inadequate physical activity this will reduce the diffusion that is occurring so no synovial diffusion at the cartilage because of the reduced activity which is also seen in 40 percent of the women who are physically inactive see over here females are more affected than males right so this can be one of the reasons for osteoarthritic changes at the hip joint so this was regarding the forces excess or reduced forces right now going to the next part over here what can happen is benign synovitis or any trauma that happened previously can cause increased synovial fluid production this will reduce your articular congruence your head of the femur sits nicely into the acetabulum right but when there is excessive synovial fluid production in the joint this articular congruence will be reduced and this will lead to reduced stability effect at the atmospheric pressure right there won't be any stability now this micro instability which is present will create unfavorable cartilage load what do i mean by this your head is over here and your acetabulum is here now because of the excessive uh, fluid production that is present 
this head won't be equally taking the weight right the periphery over here always tends to take more weight than the center that's what happens and degeneration is more seen at the periphery than the center because of this micro instability that is present at the hip joint because of excessive synovial fluid or any other reasons which reduce the stability at the, at the hip joint now over here this point is very important the degeneration often it occurs more at the periphery than the center even though the center bears more weight in standing or sitting the head of the femur the center part bears more weight while you are standing or sitting even though that is the case degeneration can occur more at the periphery than the center because of this instability so with that last point we are done with the topic so now let's summarize what did we see we saw some risk factors basically they were related to your excessive weight like bmi and then there is excessive manual labor repetitive running then we also talked about some injury post injury and then those injuries can cause chronic synovial irritation fluid leakage micro instability and also abnormal loading also we talked about some anatomical abnormalities and also the fai that is the femoroacetabular impingement these are the risk factors for your arthrosis then we saw how it can occur in us that is basically increased or reduced forces at the hip joint reduced forces will reduce the synovial fluid diffusion at the cartilage which will cause osteoarthritic changes or excessive fluid will cause instability at the hip joint which will create improper loading of the cartilage periphery will be more loaded than the center which will cause degeneration at the periphery so with that we finish off the topic that's all for today guys thank you for watching if you like my content please share it with your friends don't forget to hit that subscribe button and please like the video as it really helps me out and also let me know in the comment section what other videos you would like me to cover and see you soon in the next